Hey everybody, welcome to the Jimmy Dore Show. I'm here with Ron Placone and Jim Earl. Hello, hello, fellas. Hello. Look at that, how nice it looks. Hi. Huh? Things look nice. So, you know, we talked about this a lot on the show, about uh, my theory about why the uh, neoliberals are pushing this Russia thing. Uh, because they don't want to talk about what's really wrong with the Democratic Party and how they can't help but turn their back on their base and they're in bed with corporations and they don't want anybody to notice or talk about it. They want to pretend they're still the party, an opposition party, which they're not. So, like, for instance, uh, here's a uh, Christopher Hayes. We talked about this on yesterday's show. He, he tweets out, by the way, this probably is a minority view, but if Flynn had a phone call with Russian ambassador urging him not to overreact to sanctions, I don't think that's the worst thing in the world. But why all the subterfuge and dissembling? Why did everybody act like there's something to cover up? And then Michael Tracy says, because Democrats stoked flaming Russia hysteria for months and would latch on to any evidence that purported to show Trump as being compromised. So under that, so with that in mind, even Christopher Hayes is like, what's the big, and everybody, oh, right, and they can't, this nonstop Russia thing. By the way, Trump wants to have normal relations with Russia the way Barack Obama said he wanted to Mitt Romney in 2012. And uh, the neoliberals in the mainstream media seems to want World War fucking three. That's not not a joke. We've done videos. They're ramping up. NATO's ramping up forces all over the effing place. From the Black Sea with all kinds... Estonia to Lithuania to Germany... Anyway, um, you already have people like uh, Keith uh, frothing at the mouth, Olbermann and John McCain screaming, traitors, we've been attacked. They've invaded us. Yeah, they sound like they want to provoke a war with a a nuclear power. To me, that's the most irresponsible thing in the world. Yeah, I mean, all all of a sudden it's like pseudo progressive to sound like McCarthy. Yeah. It's like, what's happening? Isn't that weird? That's really beyond weird. So that's so under that guys, Trump did a press conference today. And of course, the headlines is 77 minute meltdown, all that stuff. They're saying how horrible it was. Think about that, though. But Trump's going out in front of a press, which he always maligned. And he's horrible to the press. I'm not defending Donald Trump's treatment of the press whatsoever. But think about that. He's going out now to give a press conference to talk about this stuff. And the press has been ramping up this Russia BS. Here, here, so here's his, let's listen. Here's, his, here, here's a little clip that they were running on the Huffington Post today. Presentation directly to the American people. He's going to make his presentation directly to the American people, right? He's going around the media. That's what that sounds like to me. With the media present, which is an honor to have you this morning, because many of our nation's reporters and folks will not tell you the truth and will not treat the wonderful people of our country with the respect that they deserve. And I hope going forward we can be a little bit, uh, a little bit different, and maybe get along a little bit better if that's possible. Maybe it's not, and that's okay too. Unfortunately, much. <laughs> First of all, I think that's ballsy. I don't know why. I, 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 that appeals to me that he said, uh, I'd like to get along better with the press, but if not, that's okay too. Like, when that, that's, to me, that's a little bit, that's that, that catnip to the right. Like Bernie gave to the left in that debate in New York when he said, Lloyd Blakefly has said, I'm a dangerous person. And he's right, I am dangerous. Oh, we went crazy. Yes, give it to him. That's kind of, to me, I don't, that's how I took that. Like when he said, you know, I'd like to get along better with the press. If not, that's okay, too. I got, I'm doing my fucking, you know, I'm doing what I want to do. I'm the president. I don't know. I, uh, it, See, I kind of took it as that's like the closest he can get to being diplomatic. Yeah. Like that, that's how I kind of like, Oh, yeah. you took it as like a failure because like he should reach out more to the press. It, it makes more sense. Not to, even reaching out more to the press, but I feel like he's trying to be like low key here, trying to be, and he's just like, ah, but I'm still kind of a dick all the time. Like, like that's kind of how I took it. I think it's just more of his fucked up verbal diarrhea. The man can't shut up. He can't end a sentence when he should. Well, you know, I have tremendous respect for the, the press. But then again, I don't. Well, I'm going to react to the Russians and the spy ship. But then again, and I might not. But you're not going to hear about it. But, you know, I'll do it alone. You don't have to know about it. All this kind of 
Tourette's yeah, syndrome. I think shit. there's a lot to what you're saying. Maybe that's <laughs> maybe he just didn't know what to say when to end that sentence. Word salad. Maybe. All right, so let's keep going though. Here he goes. But I I don't know. I still like it. I like it. Ah, we don't get along. We don't get along. The media in Washington D.C., along with New York, Los Angeles, in particular, speaks not for the people, but for the special interests and for those profiting off a very, very obviously broken system. Now, I will say this. Uh, a lot of people came to the Young Turks and then came to this show because they couldn't, they, they were seeing through the mainstream news media, including MSNB frickin' C. We're not just talking about Fox or CNN or whatever. MS, people got sick. They were like, oh, you're right. They're not speaking for the people. They're carrying a corporate message, a neoliberal corporatist message, and they're smearing the real deal guy in favor of propping up a corporatist warmonger who we can't stand. And people saw right through it. They saw them giving more time to Trump's podium, empty podium, than they did to Bernie Sanders. People saw what was happening. So he, in a sense, again, why, why he resonates is because he's he's touching he's touching on real truths. Even though he does it in like a disingenuous way, he's mm -hmm. touching on tr truths that are real. People do not trust the fucking media. I don't trust them. That's why we do this show. That's why you're here. I mean, it is hard to imagine that a media outlet owned by Comcast wouldn't necessarily be for the people, but but here we are nonetheless. Comcast, which people, I don't know if people know, I mention it all the time, chose, uh, voted one of the worst companies in the world to work for. Always, but voted that. And uh, yeah, I wonder why they're carrying the corp. Anyway, so there's more to this. The press has become so dishonest that if we don't talk about it, we are doing a tremendous disservice to the American people. Tremendous disservice. We have to talk about it to find out what's going on, because the press honestly is out of control. The level of dishonesty is out of control. He, he, he just repeats himself. <laughs> He's, you're right, Jim. It's just this verbal diarrhea. It's out of control. Uh, honestly, but, out of control. But but a, you, you just said believe that. me. But yeah. It's an honor to have you here. But you're out of control. <laughs> it, you're lying. But it's an honor to have you here. It's an, it's an honor to have you here. If he rolled back media deregulation, uh, we might be okay in the long run. Like, if that was, like, the one progressive thing that happened. Yeah. I, I mean, he's not going to, but, you know. If he, if he rolled back? Yeah, like, like if he rolled back, like, the Telecom Act of 1996. Oh, no. He, like, there... stuff like, it's not going to happen. I'm just saying, like, like, what if, like, someone, like, stuck that idea in his head? Yeah, I, I had that dream, too. That he, like, he, had regulations. I had a dream like that, too, that he, that he would enact... Uh, uh, the public option, hmm. like oh, we're going to repeal Obamacare, but we'll give you the public option. Like I, I th it, it, they're not going to do that. But I, I had that pipe dream also. Yeah, like, like, like what if he accidentally like, screws something? Like he accidentally does something amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what if he accidentally does something great? Somebody puts it in his ear. Well, that's what I thought of. Somebody put it in his ear. If you do single payer health care, they'll put you on Mount Rushmore. Yeah, and then compliment him after. It, you'll have you you will be president forever. They'll repeal. The term limits, you could be president, he, and I'm sure he's like, well, that sucks. I don't want to be president too much longer. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so there you go. That's that's what I think about Trump's press conference. Hey, the oh. next live Jimmy Dore show is March 4th. That's a Saturday. Get your tickets right below. The next one after that is March 20th. The shows sell out really fast, so get your tickets right now. Link's right there.